Exactly, exactly, woo! Uh, the, 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 the truth is that I just got it, just got it ready this uh, afternoon in total panic, so everything is as, as it should be. Um, I'll be talking about uh, how to take Log4J on a global scale using collaborative security. Um, yeah, well, there, are, there aren't much to say other than that there's a fancy picture of me from when I worked at KPMD and had to wear a tie to go to work. And also, I had to go to work, which I don't now anymore because everything is work from home. Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to repeat all that. Um, in order to understand how data is collected, we need to talk a little bit about uh, how CrowdStack works. It's not going to be a completely product marketing talk, uh, but just a very overall basic talk about, about that. Um, but first, I want to address one of the reasons why CrowdStack was built in the first place, because as we all know, all those of us who work with cybersecurity or has an interest in cybersecurity, there is a problem that is not solved because everybody gets hacked and the, as time goes, those of us who have been around for a long time, know that more and more people get gets hacked and companies spend bigger and bigger fortunes trying to prevent that and, and it doesn't work, right? So, so so basically, what you could ask yourself is, is are we doing something wrong? And uh, obviously, uh, CrowdSec uh, has another approach to this, which we think is much, makes much more sense. And basically, it's time for a new approach, bec uh, approach because we tried outpowering the bad guys, didn't work. We tried outsmarting them, didn't work. Uh, why don't we try to outnumber them? Because when you think of it, there is more bad guy. Uh, there is more of us than of the bad guys. So why don't we try and take advantage of that? Because if, when you think of it, nobody wants to fight a beehive. If, if a, a single bee, not so bad. But if a thousand bees comes 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 uh, running at you, you run. If you're sane, you run. And that's because there are a lot of them. So it, so we let's try to take the, that analogy and put it into into security. So basically. Uh, I'll try to, in, in trying to explain how CrowdStack works, I uh, usually compare it with, with Waze and calling it the Waze of cybersecurity. And if you don't know what Waze is, Waze is a, it's a GPS app on your phone that shares information about your travel, how fast you're going, where, you're, where, there, is, where there are queues and uh, where, where, where there are holes in the roads and stuff like that. And it shares that with all the other um, Waste users so that everybody hopefully uh, avoids all that stuff. And it's sort of the same with, with CrowdSec. CrowdSec detects the attack it sees on your service and shares them with, everyone, with everybody else. And it also blocks the attacks if you want that, which you, which you typically, typically want. Um, and basically, CrowdSec uh, reads lock, right? Then it detects threats, it mitigates those threats, and it sends those signals back, and then they are assessed and shared with the community, with the rest of the community as, as block lists, basically. Yeah. <coughs> These are just examples of attacks. I'm not going to talk very much about them. Other than the cards, they can also detect uh, web-based attacks, and this is what uh, what we did when, in terms of this log for j thing, because CrowdSec reads the web server log and detects um, basically uh, those um, log for j strings that some of you may remember that was part of the attack. And, uh, the, and in general, this is how CrowdSec works. Whatever web-based attack CrowdSec is trying to mitigate, it's just doing it, just looking at the log. Um, the current stat as of yesterday is that we collect around 1.3 million signals each day. We have 3.7 million IPs in our smoke database, which I'll be talking about in a little while, um, and around 33,000 IPs in our Q 
curated block list that are distributed to, to other users. I'll be talking um, a little bit more about how big the network is and uh, what we call the network strength um, in a later slide. And the CrowdStack is open source. And uh, the, the license we've chosen for, Crowd, for CrowdStack is, is, is MIT, which means that it's free forever. Once uh, the source has been opened, it cannot be closed, and that is completely by design, because being a young company uh, and all that, um, there is a risk that somebody with a lot of money uh, wants to buy us, so we can, ha we, can have, we can have a lot of money, which is good, but what is not good is, 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 is if those if that company based of money as, or driven by money as companies often are, uh, they want to close the source and, and basically screw up the community, screw with the community and, and destroy everything we've worked for. So hence, this is MIT, it's open. If, if, something, if, if, if a company wants to do that, nothing happens, the, 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 code, get, the code gets forked and uh, that was a bad decision. Um, we offer Crosstech offers a fair deal, we think. You share the, uh, the um, information about your text you see, and you get all the block list stuff back for free. So that is, so, so that is sort of the, the, the trading agreement. If you don't want to share, then you can always you know, pay and stuff. But, but Crosstech is free to use, no strings attached. Um, a question that I'm, using, that I'm often asked is, what about privacy? Well, it's pretty easy to to not, um, to not give out people's information if you don't collect them. Because usually, uh, when, um, when something is free, it means you're the product. That's how it is with Facebook and everything else. But in CrowdStack, you're not the product. The, the bad guys, IP, IPs, they're the product. So basically, that's, it's their privacy that we, that we sell, and uh, honestly, who cares? <laughs> I mean, they ask for it. So um, CrowdStack only collects the timestamp of, of any given event, um, the offending IP, and a behavior which basically means a, a, a scenario that's been triggered. A scenario can be SSH brute forcing uh, or any attack. It's just that, that is everything we collect. We don't collect anything about how the attack is being performed, whatever. We just know that it matches the scenario, and that's it. Another option or another important thing with, with CrowdStack is uh, how do you deal with poisoning and false positives. There is a, there, there's an ill, it's an ill-built consensus engine that works on the server side of CrowdStack, which um, assesses all, P, all IPs that are, put, that, are put, that are being sent to us in the, in the smoke database. This is, this is the, the initial database where signals enter. There's a trust rank. Um, Basically, all new agents, all agents have a trust rank attached, and they start with trust rank zero. And, and over time, as they are contributing signal, signals and they prove trustworthy and all that, um, gradient rises. Uh, and after six months of being rock stable and trustworthy, they get a trust rank of 99. And um, that is important because this trust rank is being used uh, as a sort of a point score whenever an IP is deemed malevolent. For instance, it need, an, an IP, in order for it to be deemed malevolent, it needs a certain amount of points, and those points are based on the, on the trust rank, basically. And, and, and the reason for this is that, is that we, want to, we want it to be as expensive and, and uh, um, hard to poison the database, because if you are a, um, a bad guy and want to poison the database, it takes a lot of time. That's one thing. And also, in this voting process, uh, an ASN can only give one vote, meaning that if you want to have, if you think you can poison the CrowdStack database by, uh, by buying a thousand VPSs on the same cloud provider, you're wrong, because they don't have many ASNs. So you need to have them on a lot of ASNs around the world in order for, to have a, a chance to build uh, this trust rank, and also a lot of time. Um, there is, in, in terms of... Um, False positive. We, we, we have a small fleet of honeypots where we basically um, evaluate uh, the, the, the signals that comes from, from all the agents that we don't have control over. So the honeypots have a slightly uh, bigger trust rank. There's a whitelist. There are certain IPs that we don't want to, white, want to blacklist, like Google DNS, uh, Cloudflare CDNs, stuff like that. 
And uh, this looks a little bit uh, pre-crime-ish, but there's also a predictive algorithm uh, saying that if a certain um, number of IPs from the same net block has been doing bad things, we just, at some point, we just block the entire net block, saying that nothing good comes out of that, why not uh, block them in advance? And then, after this consensus process, uh, IPs are being sent to the fire database and distributed back. And as I said before, there's around 3.7 million IPs in the smoke database and around 33,000 in the fire database. So it is a very conservative uh, assessment because we don't want false positives. We just simply don't. And uh, so far, it works well. Um, this is not a detailed talk about CrowdStack, even though that you may have felt it like that already. Um, if you want to, want to learn more about which OS is supported and how CrowdStack works in details and all that. Um, I have, I'm having some workshop during MCH. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about those that are already arranged. Uh, if you want to have one uh, in your village or whatever, just uh, uh, feel, feel free to approach me and I'm sure we can uh, find a way to do that. Um, yeah, there are, more de there are more details on that in the end of my talk and now it's time for my first break. Right, before I'm talking specifically about log 4 day, it's important to understand that CrowdSec is not, a, it's not a web application firewall, it's not a WAF. And regarding log 4 day, this is particularly important uh, because, as you may know, if not, then I'll talk about it a little bit later, it only takes one request uh, if you're vulnerable to, uh, to, get, to get compromised. So, and, and, give, and, and because CrowdSec reads logs, things need to be in the log before it can be blocked. And if, it's in, if, and, if so, and if it's already in the block and you're vulnerable, then you're already fucked. So CrowdSec relies very much on this network effect. It relies very much on the community signals. If you're a vulnerable server and you're protecting this CrowdSec, then you hope that the network has detected those IPs because, yeah, you are, you're in trouble. Um, luckily, whole this, this whole reputation based CTI works pretty well because we did a, we did a small study not scientific at all, uh, where we were on two identical servers, in try in, in the, and the whole objective was to try and find out how big is the network effect. Basically, we set up two DPN servers on AWS, identical. The only difference was that one of them had uh, the, bouncer, uh, the bouncer part of CrowdSec, which is the IPS part of CrowdSec, blocking traffic. Because once, once, once you um, have blocked uh, the IPs in the, tra in, in, the, in the firewall in the firewall of the host machine where CrowdSec is installed, then it won't be in the log and then it won't be in the stats, basically. So we uh, left those machines running for three months and it turned out that 92% of all the bad traffic aid in that server was blocked by the community already. So this is good news if you're, if you're vulnerable for log to Log4J back in December and uh, you relied on CrowdSec for this. Um, but it's also important to note that, that, that this is also, CrowdSec is also in a way resemble, resembling to a honeypot in general because it's possible to install the CrowdSec um, scenario or the honeypot scenario in the scenario without being vulnerable. You just need a web server. So, conclusion, community matters. All right, this, hopefully this, this is the part you came for. This is, what we, this is where we are now. Um, if there should be a couple of you who don't know what Log4J is, I'll give you a, the very short version of this. Um, on December 9th uh, last year, Apache Foundation released an info on a critical bug in the Log4J library, um, exploitable via remote, via remote code execution. And um, it turns out Log4J is used everywhere, and by everywhere, I mean everywhere, right? Um, I saw this tweet from a guy called Kasim Coden, uh, which where it dawned on me because he had in his iPhone, he had set his name to this J, specific J and DI string, which which then exploits the server, and and it turned out he got a connection back from Apple servers, and they were and they were vulnerable, and then I was like, hmm, it really is everywhere. So it was everywhere. So everybody, obviously, went uh, totally in panic, uh, and. Uh, 
everybody had and their, uh, everybody was busy uh, at least in the in the security field to uh, it was by re by reason free tools and uh, resources to help out and so did we we uh, we released the entire list of of IPs that were actively uh, abusing uh, the vulnerability so that people could uh, import it into their own firewall. This is a super fast uh, overview of, of the timeline. The, 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 de the details of the vulnerability, on the vulnerability was released on, on December 9th. On December 10th, CrowdStrike released the first version of the log 4 j scenario. Um, then uh, that scenario was pushed out to a number of agents, and and uh, S at Signal started pouring in a little bit, um, but it didn't peak until like two days later. Because when you think of it, this is a really good example of what what is cool about ho this whole community stuff. That 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 when that we have when you have a a community of CrowdStack users that. That, could, that, that you can utilize in this way just by send, sending out a scenario to them, then you can start harvesting CTI on, on even new vulnerabilities. And it, and it, ha and it happened pretty fast. Um, as the, as the, the attacks evolved, we also needed to um, update the scenarios. Because in the beginning, it was just this plain uh, text string, but of obfuscation shenanigans and stuff uh, made them um, happen, of course, as, uh, as hackers do. Uh, so we had to update the scenarios as well. Uh, so on December 12th, on December 13th, on December 16th, and finally on December 20th, when somebody from the community was adding some Unicode uh, bypass pattern thing, um, it was updated then. And then in the end, it turned out there was, there was 34 grog patterns uh, in, in the end scenario, which is uh, pretty cool, I think. This is uh, the spike of signals you can see here on December 10th. Not much going on. No. On December 12th, it goes bananas. Um, but as we started getting signals, there was, there was some signals that we, that we, uh, that we um, received that were somewhat different. And uh, our data scientists looked into it, and it turned out that, it was, that there was a German security research company that were do, who were doing scanning. And obviously, we didn't want to interfere with their uh, research or anything. And also, there were not any harm. So we blocked them out. And this is how Log4j um, is looking on, up until now. Uh, you can see a big drop in the end of May. And then after that, there were a, little there were a few things going on, especially there were two big, two big spikes to the right. Um, which I'll be talking a little, uh, talking a little bit about. Uh, that was on June 21st and July 7th. Uh, we're not really sure what happened, but we know who did it. It's this guy. 13.89.48.118. Both on June 22nd and on July 7th, uh, this guy was uh, going crazy with the log 4 j attacks. Um, we don't really know. Um, it, was, it was interesting because on this, uh, this is our data scientist. He, he tweeted that on June 22nd. And then on July 7th, uh, there was double as many attacks and as, 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 as he saw on, on June 21st. Um, as I said, we don't know why. But we have a theory, at least for June 21st. And that theory is that on June 23rd, um, there was a there was a uh, report from from CISA, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency in the U.S., who warned that uh, malicious cyber cyber actors were were trying to exploit log for shell in VMware Horizon servers. So, one can only guess that that's what they were trying to do. And given, as I said, when I talked about log for j initially, in, initially. Um, Log4j library is everywhere, so it's highly unlikely that everything is patched by now, and probably ever will. So we, we may see more of this. Who knows? Um, it's pretty clear that, that, when you, that when you're collecting a lot of data, like, like we do, uh, there are other fun things to see, some more fun than others. I give you that. But uh, 
Here it goes. Here is the top 10 of ASNs hosting malevolent traffic. Some are more legit than others. Um, I'll talk a little bit about um, hackers and their need for anonymity in a little while and why, and when, why they are hacking like that. And um, also about how, um, how some cloud providers are, are better than others in taking those, uh, those bad, uh, those compromised servers down. Uh, let's look at the two figures at bold. Because uh, the top one shows that over time, all the IPs that, um, that, that has been seen at least once, at least once and the malevolent at some point, over time, since CrowdStack started like a year and a half ago, is around 2.79%. But if you look at it, how many new IPs does, IP, does CrowdStack verify in a, in a week, then it's six times as high, meaning that the, 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 the IPs that, that the bad guys are using is rotating a lot on the, short, on the short term. And the reason why they do that is because they want to be anonymous. And, and, um, and the, the way, one of the, whole, one of the, the ideas behind CrowdSec is to automatically detect all those attacks and block them right away and by the root, by the root if possible. Um, so this is uh, good news because we really want to put those assholes out of business. Um, Two percent of those IPs, uh, they renew every 12 hours, and in a week, 12 percent of the IPs are seen uh, for the first time. So yes, it's, it turns out at least when you look at the look at the stats directly, it it looks like uh, the CrowdStack uh, strategy by blogging those IPs right away automatically is a good idea if we get the world domination that we are trying to achieve. This is another thing, uh, because it turns out that SIP is constantly being hammered. Um, we talked to a, um, a user uh, back in November that um, is, is a friend's voice over IP provider, and they uh, were seeing a lot of things, a lot of uh, SIP brute forcing, and they suggested that we wrote a scenario for it. And we have done that for, for our honeypots only, and I'll tell you in a little while, while that, why that is important. But if you look at it uh, per agent, then, then, the, then the SIP scenarios are by far the biggest contributor. Um, because on one day, we, 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 got, we got 83,000 um, signals just on, just on SIP, just on that single scenario. And um, given that it's only installed on honeypots, and honeypots are special in the sense that they don't block, first of all, they, do, they don't block uh, attacks, so, um, so an attacker can, in theory, keep on, keep on hammering. And also, um, the way the scenario is, is made is, is pretty dumb, so it rea reacts on any, on any request to the SIP protocol, but given that it's, that, it's, that it's a honeypot, nobody would want to talk to it anyway. That's uh, what honeypots are for, right? And also, it turns out that SSH is constantly being hammered. Um, this is by far the most reported scenarios we get, we get we get around as I said 1.3 million uh, IPs uh, 1.3 million signals every day and around a million of those are on are, are on SSH either normal brute forcing or slow brute forcing um, and we get signals from 5,000 agents and uh, around and uh, and 6,000 sorry 60,000 bad actors are reported on this. This is over time an overview of uh, of uh, the top threats that that, that we've detected. Um, over time, we have detected 102 million signals, uh, and 60 percent the orange and the blue and the green those were the ones we saw before. This, those are SSH boot forcing. Um, Windows is only Windows boot forcing is only around two percent of those, but CrowdSeg is uh, data is is uh, most likely, or they are totally, uh, with, totally guaranteed to be biased because CrowdSec is mostly on Linux. And if inst when you install CrowdSec on Linux, it automatically detects that you, has, that you have SSH and install the scenario for that. And um, Windows is a, a very, is a very new, is a very new platform, so it's not very widely used yet. Oh, sorry. I sp um, this is an overview of. Um, 
of selected cloud cloud vendors and how good they are at cleaning up when when a, when a VPS or a customer's VPS has been compromised. On the, XI, on the X axis, there is what we call the malevolent du duration. And that is the number of days an IP is reported by the community. So an average IP of all, uh, an average MD, malevolent duration, duration of all IPs in, in this, in, in, their, in their ASN, is an indicator of the due diligence um, in terms of dealing with compromised assets. Um, and on the, and on the y-axis, there's a number of ASNs this, uh, cloud, this cloud provider has. There's a big difference between um, the cloud providers and how good they are at taking down compromised servers. But there's also a huge difference between, between um, hosts in terms of how many risky services they host. And for instance, like a vulnerable PHP CMS, that's like asking for trouble, right? Um, uh, yes. In the, the orange here is the, is the average uh, MD uh, for each provider, and AWS was best of those that, that we looked at. Three days in general, it took them, whereas OWH, uh, OVH took 17 days. So it's not, a, it's not to say that AWS are good and OVH are bad. These are indications that we see. And um, in spite of how good AWS are at cleaning up, they, are still, um, they still have a lot of attacks. So uh, wonder how it would have looked if, uh, if, they, were, if they were worse at cleaning up. Uh, so AWS dominates this space with the DigitalOcean. I don't know if that's something to be proud of or not. And um, the CrowdStrike the crowd network strength is basically the top 10 of the, of the most um, of the, of the countries that has most cross -like agents. Uh, the picture is a little bit blurry because France, US, Germany, Netherlands, uh, they have a lot of uh, cloud providers. So we may know where the IPs are physically, but we don't know where, where, where users are from, of course. And um, that was it. Yeah. If, um, you want to try out CrowdSec? I, um, I'm doing a couple of workshops here, here at MCH. I have one scheduled at the Village People uh, Village tomorrow at 1600, and on Sunday in the Secura um, Village. And there may be more to come. Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, both villages they have a limited space, so if you if you if you really want to join, come early, or you can also ask me to come to your village to do one. Uh, I'd be happy to do that. Um, find us on, on Twitter at crowd underscore security. Uh, crowd security without the underscore or crowd sec, those are different. Those are not us. Um, you can also join our friendly Discord community at discord.gg slash crowd sec or scan the QR code. We also have workshops there. Or you can send me a mail on, or hit me up here at MCH. Um, I'll be around until Tuesday. All right, that was it.